All right, thank you very much. Um, Peter Thiel, who was very popular in Silicon Valley until very recently for reasons we won't go into today, um, uh, famously said, we wanted flying cars and instead we got 140 characters. And his point was those of us in the tech world should uh, pay attention to the difference between getting short-term progress and solving the really hard problems. My uh, riff on that is we wanted Rosie the Robot, that's what I grew up watching, you know, the Jetsons, and that's what I would like to see, is domestic robots that can take care of my kids and my dishes. Um, instead, what we've got is Roomba that can kind of flail around my apartment and maybe pick up some of the dirt, but not all. Um, there are some great breakthroughs in AI, so I think we were all surprised when DeepMind won it go. Um, and there are domains of AI in which you could rightly make the Kurzweilian claim that there's been exponential progress. Um, we're doing a lot better, for example, in speech recognition than we were even a few years ago. Um, but I would say in strong AI, there's been almost no real progress. There's actually almost no real data. So I'll take my license as psychology professor and make up some data. I, maybe that was a joke in poor taste. Um, <clears throat> um, so here's Eliza in 1965 and Siri roughly now. I would say there's almost no progress towards the strong AI where you could ask your device to do whatever you want, not just can things about the weather or sports scores and get a reasonable answer. I would say we're not really there yet and we should be wondering why. Um, I think part of what we need is simply more ambitious goals. So I recently edited a special issue of AI Magazine that I hope some of you will take a look at called Beyond the Turing Test, in which people propose a lot of fresh ways of testing AI. The classical um, Turing Test is too easily gamed. It's really just an exercise in evasion. You can think of harder tests, and maybe if we were driving towards them, we'd make more progress. I just made one, a new one up the other day, which I'll call the Domino's Test, which I thought I'd share with you, which is... Um, interesting because it's a real world test. So imagine you've got a drone or driverless car and you want it to deliver a pizza to an arbitrary location as well as your average teenager might be able to do. I would say although we can, we can fake the Turing test right now, this is actually pretty hard. Um, a lot of it is about the complexity of the natural, of natural language and its interface to <clears throat> the real world. So you might, for example, tell your delivery device, please get me to apartment 512. And that could mean a lot of different things like fly into my balcony, if your map allows you to identify it, or go to the doorman, get verbal instructions about which bank of elevators to use, find the right button, call the elevator, get off on the correct floor, and so forth. If you live in New York City, you do a lot of delivery, or if you're a delivery person, you do a lot of deliveries in a lot of different buildings. You never get exact detailed information about that, but somehow you know, the, the courier is able to figure out all of that, or maybe just from the address. Getting a system that was that flexible, I think, would be actually quite far from where we are right now. Of course, there are a lot of people that are convinced that deep learning is almost magical. I'm sorry I wasn't here for Peter Norvig's talk. I hear that he had a great line about deep learning being something like the best we've got among a lot of um, not-so-great choices, sort of alluding to Churchill's line about democracy. There are people that think deep learning is bringing us there. I'm not one of them. And in fact, the minute that deep learning got popular, it was on the front page of the New York Times, I wrote a skeptical piece, and I think it's worth reflecting four years later on what I said there. So November 2012, I said, realistically, deep learning is only part of the challenge of building intelligent machines. It's the state of the art as, as such as we've got. Um, but what I said is such techniques lack ways of representing causal relationships, are likely to face challenges in acquiring abstract ideas, and they have no obvious ways of performing logical in inferences. There's still also a long way from integrating abstract knowledge. I still think all of that is true, despite all the hype, billions of dollars that have been invested in deep learning. I think that's pretty much the same place that we were at. And what I said then is, um, to paraphrase an old parable, deep learning is a better ladder, but a better ladder doesn't necessarily get you to the moon. And the question is, how are we going to get to the moon?